back to the channel. So today I'm going to touch upon something very important. I'm going to give you guys four key tips on how to improve your head movement. I know we have a bunch of head movement drills on this channel. So you guys can find uh, head movement drills by yourself with a partner, pool noodles, with mitts or pads. So there's a bunch of head movement drills that we have and a bunch of videos that I'll leave in the description box. So if you guys haven't checked out those videos, uh, go check them out right now because I'm going to be referencing, referencing some of those videos on this video. So one of the first and one of the most important ones, which I feel is sometimes I guess, uh, I don't want to say uh, overlooked, but it is very essential in the sport altogether is of course use your feet. And what I mean by that is, okay, so for example, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people practice certain movements in, in, a, in a stationary position, and that's cool. It's always good, like, to begin that way. So for example, like, let's say I'm, I'm right here with my head moving, right? It's just slipping, 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 right? There's not really much going on. I'm actually just really in place. Instead of just slipping in place, like, try to cut an angle. Let's say, like, a right cross is coming at me, right? And I'm going to do something very unorthodox, right? So I'm going to slip in this way and as I slip I'm a step right I'm a slip I'm a step right and overall besides the fact that I basically have the opportunity to kind of like slip and get out of the position of the right hand even though it is a little bit it's a little bit dangerous and a little bit tricky a little bit more risky I have the opportunity to throw a couple, a couple punches on my own on the orthodox fighter and at the same time like I really I'm not really in any sense of danger because I have the opportunity to land every punch and since he just missed his right hand basically even the left hand is kind of useless at this point and if he throws a hook, a hook, a left hook at this moment, I could, I could see it perfectly, of course, unless he uh, kind of repositioned himself, but for the most part, you know, like, if, I, if I'm throwing something, you get me? Like, I'm just gonna, st and I'm step, all right? I'm gonna use my forward. And it just doesn't necessarily have to be, like, at an angle, right? I'm actually also utilizing my forward as, you know, maybe combinations might come in, okay? So what I mean by that is, maybe instead of like, you know, slipping, slipping, rolling, right? In, in a stationary position, maybe I could slip, slip in a stationary position as the, the, as the hook comes, I could just step back and be out of the range of the left hook that's coming in on me. Here Danny Jacob throws a couple jabs and as you guys could tell, Canelo kind of slips him in a very stationary position. And as you guys could tell by this freeze frame, Canelo is actually already taking that step back. So Danny Jacobs is going to follow up with a 1-2, a very wide 2 for that matter. But Canelo will already be kind of proceeding off of his back foot and that too will kind of like scrape his thigh. Jabs, nothing landed. However, Canelo is moving and not punching. You got to be able to utilize your feet, not just to cut to an angle with your head movement, right? But also, you know, maybe on the way back. That's why you see a lot of boxers use kind of like the rope drills. You know what I mean? Those rope drills are very important because, you know, either A, you know, you could, you know, roll in, roll in, roll in, right? Roll out, roll out, roll out. Or you know you like partner drills that we've done on this channel where you know you can slip 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 right or you can just put it all together and go forward and back right slip slip roll roll slip slip roll roll and so forth and so forth overall like the most fundamental part right there is use your feet put your feet and your head movement together his head movement and waist movement has been exceptional and you can tell they worked on that but he's doing it while coming going forward that's so hard to do it so for my t second tip i would suggest that every time you guys throw to get your head off the center line and what i mean by that is once again if you're practicing things in a stationary way it it's cool there's nothing wrong with it you get me so like you're here one two three right one two three one two three okay so instead of doing that try to change it up with this all right so maybe like when, when you throw the jab you know throw the jab right here throw the cross right here throw the hook right here you get me like just get your head off the center line a little bit if i'm here and i know something's gonna come after i throw a certain shot you know maybe like if i'm here right I'll throw the jab from right here right or over here i'll throw the jab uh, from right here and then once again i'm using my my footwork to get off the center line you get me so you don't necessarily have to add the footwork but just get your head off the center line right here bah, get your head off the center line boom and basically if a punch were to come through you know my head's not in the center and i'm not being counter punched basically so Make sure that after you throw a punch, make sure that you try or at least kind of keep in mind to keep your head off the center line, especially if your opposition is a good counter puncher. Like the last thing that you want is to throw a punch, be in a very stationary position and where he's able to counter 
down the line. So my third tip is anticipate and keep in motion. So like I mentioned in a video like two weeks ago, I talked about how, for example, like every time you throw a cross, one of the most count, like one of the most common counter punches that you'll see to like a right cross would be like a left hook. And so we saw a video with Canelo telling a kid, hey, no matter what, after every cross that you throw, roll, 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 roll. You get me? And there was, you know, I, I talked about the pros and cons of that. What I mean by keeping it in motion is I'm not saying that like if you're not in range like to be you know doing your defensive movements because basically you're just gonna be burning yourself kind of be wasting energy I'm just saying that when you're in range don't be one of those fighters that does it, that's just right here that's just right here that's just right here just right here right right here getting pieced up by their opponents let's say like I, I, I I'm, 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 I'm slipping right I'm slipping I'm slipping I'm slipping I'm slipping I'm slipping I'm slipping right and then like I cut to an angle right the sequence doesn't end here because what if I'm here right and my opposition beats me to an angle. So just pretend like I'm here and my opponent ends up on this side because he basically takes a step around me. Now he has the the he has the opportunity to land on me cleanly and I don't, right? I don't because I'm looking and I'm facing that way and he's facing this way at me, right? Like having the opportunity to just tag me with whatever punch he wants. So what I mean by that, by keeping things in motion is even though you're right here, right? And you basically made your opponent miss his combination the first time around you know we, we we're gonna go back to like my first tip of using your your footwork to kind of like combine your head movement you know you kind of also want to like you know step back man step back you know the sequence continues right that's what i mean by keep in motion just because you slipped it like the first combo doesn't necessarily mean that he's not gonna come back with something boxing is not just like uh it's just not two sequences sometimes it could be three or four or five or six it could be a big chain of events you know where sometimes you know fighters are just trading back and forth so you know keep keep the defensive movements in motion there's a beginning right like a beginning where we talked about like keeping things in motion so the beginning is this you know like you come in right here faint right over here faint right like the head movement there's a second there's a second part right after your opponent like you know, like, it throws something at you and you slip, right? If I step out this way, that's a sequence. It, it begins a sequence, right? And so, like, let's say he, he basically follows through and tries to get a, catch a new angle on me, then I'm going this way again, and I'm getting a new angle, right? Because of the fact that you want to keep your head moving in motion just because, right, it ended, doesn't necessarily mean, just because you basically slipped the first one, doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean that the onslaught's gonna end, you get me? You always want to get kind of like, I mentioned time and time again, an angle where you're safe and your opponent is vulnerable. Remember, boxing is a sequence and like, uh, I believe I, I even mentioned it uh, in that video where I talked about anticipating anticipating shots. Uh, I think uh, it was Cody Garbrandt who touched upon it and I'm gonna quote him again. You know, like uh, Henry, Mark Henry told him like, what do you do after like the first, like that first sequence, you get me? Cause like a lot of people think that like, it's gonna be one two three and it's gonna end right there now nah, like bro like you know like figure out like what you want to do after bro because the fight's gonna continue you know and um just reiterating the defensive part of the technical offensive part with him is i could go in there and hit a six seven punch combo dude he would he would care less he's like what did you do after you moved after your head was off your hands was up like the, mm. he's all about defense and you know i think he just helped me out a lot with saying that like getting me home to my family safe like that's what i want to do my fourth and final tip is basically this is going to sound counterintuitive to what i just said but uh stop and uh what i mean by that is that sometimes we have this tendency to follow certain pa patterns all right so let's say i'm slipping right let's say i'm slipping or let's say i'm using the triangle drill that i that i showed you guys in one of the videos down below right so let's say i'm here right right and let's say I'm following that pattern, right? Or I'm just doing traditional slips, right? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, right? Or I'm following a certain way, right? I'm a little bit faster, right? Because I want to get on the inside. Boom. Let's say I'm following those patterns. If my opponent gets a good read on me, and like I mentioned, kind of figures out my speed, my pattern, my rhythm, my tempo. If he knows that I'm slipping one, two, one, two, then... As I come in one, and when it's time to slip the other way, he might tag me with a punch that may be, or two punches that may come at that tempo or at that speed, you know, a little bit faster. And just by reading my movements, because he knows that after every second, 
I'm gonna pop up on the other side. So you guys want to be well aware of that. Sometimes what you need to do is just basically stop. So all you gotta do is, and maybe instead of just slipping, 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 you stop, right? You stop a little bit, kind of think back, you know, maybe roll, step back, you get me? Just kind of like make a miss sometimes because sometimes he might want to time you, right? If I'm here, I'm out here, if I'm here, right here, right here, just stop, just for a slight second, right, you get me? And just change the, change the motion, just stop, you get me? I'm not saying that you have to stop completely because of course if you're in range that's the last thing you want to do like you just you don't want to be like stopping for like a whole two seconds you get me that's kind of like you're kind of basically playing with fire at that point but sometimes just stop just stop just stop just stop change the rhythm right just change the rhythm change the stop and change the rhythm stop and change the tempo stop and change the speed now don't stop completely I just want you guys to kind of take like a pause maybe stop was the wrong word but you know, just take a small pause, man. Just take a small pause, right? Small pause, and then like, you know, you could just change it around, you get me? Like, just change change the speed, tempo, and the rhythm. That's just basically what I mean by that. I don't want you guys to like, freeze up out of nowhere, and then like, become a stationary punching bag, you get me? Ah! Nah, I'm not saying, I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying, you know, like, sometimes you just gotta pause, and just mix it up, right? Because I always talk about patterns, rhythm, and speed, and I think that's kind of been like the concept of it, like the last, <laughs> the last few videos so uh, you know just always change it up man changes change is not always bad like sometimes you need you need change man you need change to be a more effective fighter or just to have a more effective life so yeah man basically that will be the end of this video hopefully you guys enjoyed my tips I know that, uh, that the last two were sort of uh, counter, ca counterparts right like they're counterintuitive so um, yeah man hopefully you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you check out all of our drills in the description box and if you guys wanna want to, I mean, you guys could always share our videos, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell. That way, you guys are notified every time we upload a new video. Go check out my Instagram, Team Instagram, Facebook. So yeah, man, I would suggest that you guys go check it out.